Good evening. I'm so happy that all of you are here tonight on this Christmas Eve, the second Christmas Eve services that we have in our new church. I see a lot of new faces, people that are visiting our service tonight, and I just want you to know um, that we're blessed to have you in our church. And if you have any questions or if you're looking for a church that has a lot of roots, that worships the way we've been worshiping for not a couple years, not a half a century, but for 2,000 years, you've landed at that place. And I promise you that if you're looking for that church, you will be in a church that's going to challenge you. It is going to help you to grow and to fulfill the dream that God has in your life. And so I hope that you'll take that journey along with all of us. Tonight, I want to talk to you about the gift that we give. I love Christmas. For me, it is one of the most wonderful times of the year. I love the food. I love hearing my children run down the steps to see what they got under the Christmas tree. I love listening to the Christmas carols. I love everything about Christmas. And the one thing that I love to do year after year is to get some Christmas gifts to my family. I love to get them that right gift. I love to ask them this question. It's a question that probably some of you have either been asked or you've asked this over the last Christmas season. And that question is this, what do you want for Christmas? What do you want for Christmas? Probably the most popular question that people ask. And all of us, we ask that question because we love our loved ones so much that we want to give them the right gift, the gift that they want, the gift that they've been asking for, the gift that they're going to love and appreciate. We want to give them that gift. And church family, it's great to ask that question. In fact, it's even great to give that gift. But sometimes we can spend more time trying to find what our loved ones want as a Christmas gift in their life than remembering that Christ our God came on this night as the Savior of our life. Sometimes we can become so enamored with what's going under that Christmas tree for our loved ones that we can forget that Christmas is truly the birthday of our Savior. Christmas is the only birthday, friends, in which you and I get the gift. But let tonight be something different for you. What if Christ was looking at you right now, whispering in your ear, this is what I want for Christmas. I'm tired year after year of putting all your gifts in my return pile. I want this year to get, for you to give me a gift that you've never given me before. I want you to give me a gift that I truly want, that I love, and that I am going to appreciate. What would it look like if all of us tonight said, I need to give Christ the Christmas gift? In the Bible, only one book and only at one time in the entire Bible do we ever see someone or some people ever give a gift to Christ on his birthday? It's only one time. It's when the wise men come. Y'all remember the story. Basically, these wise men in the east, they travel a great distance because they hear that there's a savior, that the king of the Jews is being born. And they travel this long distance and they come to a city that we call Jerusalem today. And they're asking around to all the people, have you heard about this star? Have you heard about this great gift that's coming to all of us? Have you heard about this gift that's going to change the world? And the people are like going, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Like, is that right now happening? And then Herod, this king that was there, a ruthless man, he heard the same thing and he started to ask the people, is what those wise men, what they're talking about, is that true? Is there actually this star that's over this child who's going to be the newborn king of the Jews? And he brings all of his religious leaders and they too say, yes, Herod, that is true. So Herod lies to those magi, to those wise men. He says, hey, listen, go find that child and when you find him, tell me where he's at because I too want to go and worship this newborn king. And as they were going there, traveling a large and long distance, they go inside of this home 
And as they walk in, they bow down and they worship. And they give Christ three gifts. Gold, frankincense, and what's the last one? Myrrh. Myrrh. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What was it about those three gifts that they gave Jesus on that very first Christmas that all of us can learn from this Christmas? What was it about those three gifts, those three amazing gifts that they brought that can give us a little insight into what we can give God this Christmas? Here's the first gift that they gave. They gave him gold. And I would submit to all of you church family that I think all of us, we need to give our first gift is the gift of pursuing God. Many of you may not know this, but the wise men, these magi, were from an area called Parthia. Parthia is present-day Persia, Iran, Iraq, Syria. It's about 500 miles from Jerusalem. You see, they didn't simply just, Jesus was born in the manger and they arrived. They had been traveling at least for 500 miles. And in the Orthodox tradition, in fact, in the Christian tradition as a whole, very few scholars, biblical scholars, say that the Magi were actually there at his birth. In fact, almost every scholar and church father of the Orthodox Church would say that they had been traveling at least 12 days after his birth. Some even argue that he could have been traveling from 12 days, listen to this, to two years. Because Herod says all the two-year-olds and under are to be killed. Why would he have said two if he was dealing with a baby? And why did the Bible say that he came into a house and not in a cave? Those wise men had been traveling over and over again. And perhaps during that time, there was a time in their life where they were like, you know what? We've been pursuing and we haven't seen anything. Nothing's happened. At any moment, they could have stopped their pursuing. You know what the word pursue means? It means to go everything, to go all after it. And when they walked into that tomb, when they walked into that house, they gave God, Christ, gold. Why gold? Because gold was given to a king. And why at that time were they giving that to that king? He was just a baby. Because I think for many of us in our world, they were telling us, stop pursuing the gold of this world. Top, stop putting things, people, places, wealth in a place where only the king should be. I think they were telling all of us, every one of you is following a leader. Y'all remember that game that we used to play when we were growing up said, follow the leader? The leader that you're following right now is who you are spending the most time thinking about every day. For some of you, you've been thinking too much about COVID. It's your leader. For some of you, you've been spending too much time thinking about what's in the political world. It's your king. It's your leader. For some of us, we've been spending so much time in worry and in stress. It's your leader. And God is saying, stop putting someone or something in a place that only God, the king, should give. That's what God wants from us, is to make him again the king over our life. Here's number two. We give God our worship. When those magi were traveling all that distance, they walked into that home, and what did they do? They gave him gold, and then they lit some incense. What does incense represent? It is only given to a God, to God. And I love that, that in that moment they were worshiping. Now keep in mind, we're talking about a baby. Jesus had not died on the cross. He hadn't resurrected. He hadn't walked on water. He hadn't fed 5,000 people. He was simply a baby. Yet they already knew that they were not going to wait for God to do something. They were walking in, praising God. And what would it look like tomorrow morning when you got up, that you didn't look under that Christmas tree first, but you simply said these two most powerful words. Thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you came to save me. Thank you, Lord, that I, we say this in the liturgy, that I'm just simply dust, but you gave me a soul. Thank you, Lord, that all of my loved ones that have passed on, I get the promise of seeing them again. Thank you, Lord. See, God is blessing all of us, and I'm just encouraging you to go out and say, God, I want to give you this gift. I'm giving you my, that you are my king, and I'm giving you my time of my worship. Thank you. And here's number three. I think the greatest gift that we can give, along with our worshiping him as our king and worshiping him as our savior, is we open up our treasures to him. You know what that myrrh that they gave him at that, in that home, what that meant? The myrrh is only given to someone when they die. It was showing us in 33 years from now, this baby is going to have a horrific death. That's why the Bible says, and we said it this, morning, this evening, that the Virgin Mary stayed quiet. She was simply pondering everything that was going to happen to her son in her heart. And I think what God is asking for all of us, church family, is he's saying, can I get you to open up the treasures that you have to give hope to the world? You know, a star is not well seen during the day. It's best seen now, at night. And there are people in your life, and it may be you, that are going through a difficult time, who are going through tremendous challenges. Trust me when I tell you that some people in this church and outside the walls of this church are going to smile to you. And they may even tell you Merry Christmas, but it is not a Merry Christmas for them. That they've lost loved ones this year, they have family members dealing with a pandemic, they're in a, an abusive relationship, that maybe they, they were one of the 4,000 people this day, today, that were diagnosed today with cancer. And I'm just encouraging you that you show them and you tell them about that star, the star of hope. Because no matter how dark it gets, it can never block out how bright a star can be. At this time, I'm going to ask our amazing choir, under the leadership of our extraordinary director, to sing you some carols. And as they're singing you these carols, I want you to listen to it, yes, enjoy how beautiful it's going to sound. But I want you to listen, listen to me, friends, the message that's in the music. Listen to what that message that is coming through in that music. And as you're listening to it, I want you to ask yourself this one question. Look at me, everyone. What are you going to give Christ on his birthday? What are you going to give this Christmas to Christ?
beloved church family, I hope that as you heard these extraordinary voices of our choir, that as you listen to the beauty of their voices, you also listen to the message and the music. And I just encourage all of you, if you would not mind, that as we're about ready to exit the church, that you would just pray with me. Just bow your heads, and let's pray together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the reason for this season. And we know that it's so easy in the world that we're living in right now to become so distracted with everything that's going around us. But in the stillness of that Christmas night, 2,000 years ago, we ask that you still our souls. And that we too, in this moment, can answer the question, what gift we're going to give you? Lord, inspire us, encourage us, and lead us to make you the king over our life. That when we wake up every single day, that we will worship and give you thanks. And that we will do all that we can to open up our treasure, our treasures of hope, comfort, mercy, joy, and love to this world. Guide us, Lord, and help us to fulfill what your gift is in all of us because you are the newborn king. And to you we will always give you glory, to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.